Welcome, Lugnut Squad. We're coming at you from Longhorn Early Davidson, and today I'm riding this a uh, 2821 Sportster S. And if you didn't know already, it's not an Evo. Right out of the gate with a brand new 1250 Revolution Max motor, which we have seen now in the Pan American now for quite a while uh, this year. It's been uh, pretty successful. It is a good looking motor, it puts out tons of power, and now this one has been retuned, not detuned as they say at Harley Davidson, and uh, we're about to find out all about that torque that this motor can put out. But onto the question that we all have, is this a Sportster and is this a real Harley Davidson? When you think Harley Davidson, you think fit and finish, starting with the design of the motorcycle itself. The swing arm, the gas tank, the motor, everything on this bike absolutely screams Harley Davidson when it comes to fit and finish, except for a couple handful of things. For example, the brake line just kind of sits on the outside. It's just very noticeable. There could have been different ways to tuck that in or hide it away. Their radiator cap seems a little uh, a little metric couldn't could have done a better job making a cap to look a little bit more decent than that and last but not least where that swing arm connects they could have put a little cap there i mean how much more could have added to the cost of this motorcycle really so is it a harley davidson let's ride it and find out all right, it's kind of awkward, like turning this on, the buttons like up top. So I'm not really like, sometimes I'm like, oh, do I do this or do I do this? Which is kind of annoying, but let's do this. Ooh, nice FXR. All right, we are in sport mode, 2000 RPM. Explosive acceleration and it is incredibly smooth. It almost, almost reminds me of the live wire. Wow! The engine is extremely quiet. It is, it, for some reason, it feels like the engine in the Pan Am is a little noisier and there's a little bit more feedback as to like how the engine is working. You can't quite feel that on this particular motorcycle. Man, is this so responsive! Past 4,000 RPM, it's just absolutely incredible. Very, very smooth. I will point out something that probably is the obvious, and I'll state it again because I've stated it before, is that forward controllers on this makes absolutely no sense. Zero. Nada zilch. And this seat makes it even worse, especially if you're going to treat it <laughs> like I just accelerated earlier. You have to hold on for dear life. It is unreal. If I had mitts and maybe a seat that it accommodated that just like, you know, had something to <laughs> for your butt to not slide off. Man, this would be way better if it had all those things. That motor is absolutely unreal. It doesn't take much. Of course, I'm in sport mode right now and the, a lot of the like the traction control and all that is very much like the Pan America. The TFT display is absolutely unreal. I actually prefer this over the Pan America screen, even though the Pan America one is like basically like an iPad on there. This desk is very user friendly. I mean, it looks fantastic. The sun was just glaring at it earlier, and I could still see it even though it's like on like I guess night mode, where the screen is dark and as opposed to like white. Man, absolutely unreal. The one thing I will say. There's the, like the controllers are very, the same ones on the Pan America and I honestly don't prefer them. They, they just kind of feel a little awkward. I think they could improve on that, but I get it. It's, you know, these are the same parts that go with the, this particular engine and setup. So uh, it doesn't really bother me that much, but it does seem like all the money they spent when they came out with Project Rushmore and everything like was one touch and user friendly and easier to use and everything within reach of your thumbs. Uh, that kind of went away obviously with this and uh, obviously it's much like a metric bike like your turn signals are on the left side and all that but you kind of forget all about it <laughs> as soon as you hit the throttle Damn. the bar and mirrors these are the types of mirrors that the street rod should have had and they would have looked significantly better the front brake I know everybody complains about not having dual disc on the front but these Brembo's are very, very good. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, such a smooth delivery from this power plant and I, it's kind of what we expected but it feels a lot smoother on here than it does on the Pan America. That Revolution Max is absolutely unreal. I knew I was going to like that. Uh, the other thing about it that absolutely is stunning is how well it handles weaves in and out of traffic like it's nobody's business. It feels extremely light and it's the, it's the weight is uh, slung low unlike the actual Sportster. So is this actually a Sportster? Well, it's by name, sure. But it does not feel like an actual Sportster. So the days of the old Evo Sportster are coming to an end. And this is what's carrying on its legacy. And some people might not like that and some people could care less. I mean, but as a motorcycle in itself, it is an incredible motorcycle. It does not feel like a Harley Davidson. But I understand what Harley's trying to do by going after markets that it doesn't have. And this is a home run, even though I always felt like the Sportster, if you're going to name something a Sportster, should compete with something like the Indian Scout. And price-wise, like the Indian Scout. Instead, they're going after Ducati Diavilles, Triumph Bonnevilles, uh, you know, the Indian FTR, all that kind of stuff. So this is most definitely a heavy contender. Now, wait, wait. <laughs> I just felt that bump. It actually is really comfortable for how short that rear shock is. It is extremely short, but it actually is very, very comfortable up until you hit a bump or a pothole, then you really feel it. So outside of that, the front suspension in combination with that rear, this thing is amazing. Those front tire, that front and rear tire being so big actually mitigates a lot of that. And on top of it, it's very much like a 48. It actually handles really well for how meaty those tires are. Very much like a Fat Bob as well. Man, the fit and finish is incredible. This is regarding the things that I said earlier. But for what it is, man, you're getting a heck of a deal for a right 15 grand. This thing is insane. It is absolutely insane. So that's all I got for you guys. If you like this video, go comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this motorcycle. I know that a lot of people hate it, a lot of people love it. I personally don't know if I would own one, but it is an amazing motorcycle. I would try to ride as much as I could, obviously. So, and I'm about to, because I'm about to do this video in Spanish. So, uh, until I see you next time, get on your Harley or on two wheels and get some wind therapy later.